Hi there, welcome to another video. This is Arlen and today we are going to create our first Blazor web application and we are going to see our project structure and what each file contains. So I have just opened up Visual Studio here. Let me just create a new project. And I'm gonna need to find the Blazor web app template. Let me just see what we have here. Okay, so the first one we got is the one we need. Click on next. I'm leaving everything at, as default here, the project name and its location. And here we can see that we are using .NET 8. I'm going to leave everything as it is. The interactive render mode is selected as server by default. We're going to see later on in another video all of these render modes in Blazor. But for now, we're just leaving everything as it is. And the interactivity will leave as it is as well per page and component. And let me just create our first Blazor web app. Okay, our project is created. Let me just run our project here. Click on start without debugging. And let's see our default project. Okay, so here's our Blazor web application. We have a home page here just stating hello world. Welcome to your new app. And then we see we have a navigation menu on the left or like a panel here where we can navigate to the counter page. We just have a counter that we can increase by clicking on the button. And we also have a weather page that just loads some boilerplate weather forecast data. So right now in this video, we're just going to go back to our project and see what each file in our project contains. Every c -sharp based .NET project has a project file with a CSPROJ extension. Here are usually inputted properties and settings that determine how the project will be built and compiled. We have specified here the .NET version that we want our project to use, and this other line enables nullable reference types. And here is specified that implicit usings are enabled in this project, which automatically includes common namespace imports based on the project type. This feature basically reduces the need for repetitive using directives at the top of every file. Let's now go to program.cs file, which is the entry point of our application. Let's just start from the top. This line creates a new instance of web application builder by invoking the static create builder method. Then we configure services of, for the application. Here we are adding a Razor components and interactive server components. And in this line here, this line here builds the web application instance or basically our app. And we have now an app. And then we write the middleware for a bunch of different things. This line adds middleware to redirect HTTP requests to HTTPS. Then here we add middleware to serve static, fi static files like HTML, CSS, JavaScript from the web root directory. This line adds middleware to protect against cross-site request forgery attacks. And here we are mapping the app component as the root component for Razor components, enabling interactive server rendering mode. And in the end, we are on the application, which is now ready to listen for and to handle HTTP requests. Let's go now to the www root folder, which contains static web assets that are served directly to the client's web browser. Here we can have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files, as well as images or other static assets. In the properties folder, then we have the launch settings.json file that contains settings related to how the application is launched during development. 
they can be modified to suit the specific requirements of the project or different development environments. We have as well the appsettings.json file, which contains configuration settings for the application that you want to be part of your app at the runtime. Things like connection strings, various application settings, such as logging levels, default values for certain parameters, or even third-party service configurations. We have a an app settings.development.json file as well, which stores configuration settings specific to the development environment. And just like this, we can create files for the other specific environments, like for staging and production as well. Let's go now to the components folder where we have all of the components of our app. In app.razor, we have the root component where we can see the root HTML document, the Blazor router, and the Blazor script tags. Inside the routes.razor file is defined the routing configuration for the application. It basically specifies the mapping between URLs and the corresponding components or pages to render. All of our pages are inside our pages folder, as we can see here. We have the home, the weather page or component. Now let's go to the layout folder, which contains the layout components. Layout components define the overall structure and appearance of our application's pages. We have the main layout data razor file, which is the main layout component used by our application. And it usually defines the overall structure of the, of the application's pages, such as the header, the navigation, the footer, if needed, and so on. And then the nav menu data razor file contains the markup and code for the navigation menu component. Lastly, we can see that we have the imports data razor file, which is actually a special razor file that contains the using directives that import namespaces globally for use across all of our Blazor components within the project. This way, we do not need to specify the namespace in each individual component file. So this was an overall introduction of the files in our project and what they are used for. We will see in more detail how to work with them in the upcoming videos but it is important to have a general knowledge in advance. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you enjoyed it. And I will see you next time.